a happy 66th anniversary to oh. Wilbur and Dolores Ott. Oh, uh, Wilbur and Dolores. Wow. Wonderful people. That is so great. Oh, congratulations, happy, you two. Happy 66th to yeah. Linda Garski's parents. Oh, wow. Mm, oh, that's yeah. so cool. Oh, they are wonderful. Wonderful nice. human beings. Wishing them a happy 66th. Enjoy your anniversary, you two. Yeah. And our qualifier today, and you can thank Seth for this one, Diane Blanchard. <laughs> That name might sound familiar. Diane uh, graciously brings us our staff cookies every month along with names for our birthday and anniversary list. It is fitting that she would get this, but we couldn't We couldn't just choose her name. No. It had to be random. It Seth didn't. did that. I, I did that. Um, yeah. Diane, uh, first of all, thank you yes. so much yes. for all that you do for us. And happy birthday. Happy birthday, Enjoy Diane. Enjoy it. We appreciate you. You Feeling are too. appreciated. You mm-hmm. are deeply appreciated. We appre- and, and it's a Thursday. It's Friday Eve, Diane. Celebrate right through the weekend. You go ahead. You go ahead and celebrate. You diverse. Let's take a look at our celebrity list. Zachary Gordon is 26, the star of Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies. Oh, what? 26? Yeah, that seems... Well, yeah, wow. wow, when did that happen? That <laughs> uh, kid jumped up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, Megan Thee Stallion is 29. Great rapper. Yes. Great, great lyricist. Uh, Corrine Fox is 30. That's Jamie Foxx's daughter. Uh, she DJs with him on B- that Beat Shazam show. Oh, wait, wait, wait. She's, his daughter's 30 years yeah, old? Yeah, yeah. How can he be old? I guess that, he's getting up there, isn't he? Yeah, I guess wow. so. That that threw me for a second. Wow. But, I, you know, I I got a 27-year-old, man. I, I mean, yeah, I'm just thinking about it like, holy cow. Yeah, that, You're not that far off, right? Oh, wow. That's rough. That's <laughs> Oh, Oh. I didn't expect to feel that old Oof. from uh, just looking at Jamie Foxx's His daughter, daughter's yeah. age. <laughs> wow. Um, let's see. Brandon Boyd is 48, lead singer and lyricist for Incubus. Oh, okay. Great band. Great band. Long, they've been around for a long time now. Yeah, now I realize yeah. it. Man. Yeah. He, uh, it's a little frustrating. That has always been a very handsome man. Somehow he looks better as he's gotten older. <laughs> I, that's not, So lucky. Yeah. Uh, another guy who kind of has done that, Yamir Yager is 52. Wow. Yamir Yager, I, I, I not just like we joke about this sometimes with like Berto Cologne or something yeah. like that. Yamir Yager is literally still playing hockey. Like he, he's Somewhere. over there in a Russian hockey league, I believe, uh, still playing hockey. Yeah. I love guys that do that. Yeah. Okay. Those are my favorite. Gordy Howe, the last story that I saw reported before his passing, he was off playing hockey without a helmet <laughs> in like some junior hockey league or something. W- he was 88 or something like yeah, that. Some insane. Not even exaggerating. Yeah. Nope. Alex Borstein is 53. Uh, famously known, I think, as Lewis Griffin on Family Guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was also uh, wonderful on uh, Mad TV for a long time. That's where a lot of us saw her first. That's right. Um, she's also gotten a lot of critical acclaim as Midge's manager, Susie, on The Marvelous Miss Maisel. Yes, she's very good in that. And one of the best voices in entertainment. I love like, her voice. I love her voice. She's got one of those classic voices, uh, TV voices. You and, and this goes back to All in the Family. And, 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 and oh, Jim! Like, yeah, uh, those kind of like that kind of voice. Yeah. It's a little similar to that, just a little bit friendlier on the ears. I think it uh, is. It's not quite so harsh. I really like her voice. She's got a really good. One. I'd like to mm-hmm. see her and uh, Kristen Shaw do like a scene together, just with those two voices <laughs> dueling back and forth. It'd be great. Nice. Uh, Christopher McDonald is sixty nine. Shooter McGavin and Happy Gilmore and many <laughs> other great uh, character roles. Oh, uh, he has been in. He's a he's one of those character actors that always pops up. You'll see him most recently. I, I he plays the coach on Mystery Glee. And that's that's very good. Oh, um, I didn't know he was doing that. Yeah, yeah, he plays the coach there, and he does a f- fabulous job of like an old school uh, coach, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. like this kind of a dopey, really not that bright, but you know, although yeah. <laughs> Kind of stuff. He is so good. He's is, at all kinds of characters. He is so good at that. That is pretty cool. That is uh, pretty cool. I did not know that. Uh, I like that. So, um, also celebrating a birthday today, the great, the wonderful, one of the greatest creators of all time. Um, genuinely, one of the greater, I, I think, just you know, humans ever. Mm. Matt Groening is seventy today. Matt Groening. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So I, I uh, might be overstepping it a little bit. He's the creator of The Simpsons, Futurama. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, you know. No, it, it's just one of my favorite. The great, people. the great comic strip, Life in Hell. Yes, which is where he got his start. As a, yes. he was a cartoonist, so mm-hmm. yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I will ramble this story any chance I get. Matt Groening uh, does has Life in Hell, this comic strip that is really popular. They are looking for a uh, a, a cartoon or something to interlude on the Mc- Tracy Ullman show mm-hmm. because it's a live sketch show. They need time to change costumes. Commercial breaks won't always give them that. So what are we going to do? We'll, we'll go to local comic strip. Our 
artists, and we'll have them draw something up. Matt Groening comes in as one of these artists. He's only got one idea. This is the biggest break of his life. And the only idea he has is life in hell. And he's sitting there, and he's thinking about something that he was told once where never go into a business meeting with one idea. You go in there with at least a couple ideas, and you give him these bad ideas, and you end on the good one. So he goes in, and literally, like, 30 seconds before he's in there, he's like, ah, uh, uh, okay, well, my, my dad's name, I'm, I'll do something based on my family. My dad's name is Homer. My mom's name is Marge. I've got a little sister, sisters, Lisa and Maggie. Mm, I don't like the name Matt, so I'll just do Bart. And I'll start out with that, but then I'll finish with Life in Hell, and boom, I got mm-hmm. Life in Hell on Tracy Allman's show. I'm Matt Groening. I'm, you know, I'm moving up on the charts. They love the Simpsons idea. Yeah. <laughs> they fall in love with it. And life in hell never even see the light of day. No, no. 35 years, 36 seasons later. Yeah. Longest running show of all time. time yeah. It's probably <clears throat> never going to be beaten. Never. It's never. the Cal Ripken of TV. Yeah. It's the Cal Ripken of TV. It'll <laughs> never be beaten. No. Uh, Matt Gray, also great, a great interview, too. Yeah, great? yeah. He's, he's very fun. The great Jane Seymour is 73 today. Uh, oh, Dr. Wow. Quinn Medicine Woman? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, She's good. She was good. She's a very good actor. Yeah, that was a good one right there. She played a Bond girl uh, in uh, uh, The Man with the Golden Gun. That's right. Thank or, you. Or was it Living Let Die? One of those two. She was a Bond girl. Very good. I think it was The Man with the Golden Gun. Okay. I think, I I think that's what it was. Oh, I'm going to revoke uh, my Bond card. Some people no longer with us, like the great, the wonderful Harvey Corman, born in this day in 27, passed away in 2008, Blazing Saddles, The Carol Burnett Show, the voice of the great Gazzo, uh, <laughs> and, and the Flintstones. I mean, uh, what a career. Uh, Mel Brooks stalwart in yes. so many of his movies. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the great Cesar Romero, born in this day in 1907, passed away in 94. Uh, many people know him. He was my first Joker. He, uh, yeah, he was my right. first Joker. Like he was. That's the way I remember Cesar Romero with that uh, caked on makeup and the the man who in his contract would not have shave his he mustache. Would not shave his mustache. So they had to cake the makeup on. And over you could still it. see it. You could still see it. Yeah, he had <laughs> but, a good mustache. But it was it was fine. No one really cared. Um, and uh, one, I'm going to try to do this. I thought I had this set up before. Okay. All right. But um, today we are celebrating Madison's own Chris Farley. Would have been 60 today. Chris Farley would oh, have wow. been 60 today. Uh, I want to see if this will play. Okay. Nothing like a fire and a noble romantic mission to warm the cockles of your heart. Yeah. I like my cockles room temperature. Thank you very much. Hey, if you're not doing this for cockle warming, why are you doing it? <laughs> Simple. Fartwad gets his princess. I get what I want. That is Chris Farley as Shrek. Wow. Uh, there is uh, Chris Farley was cast as Shrek before Mike Myers. And uh, he actually, even him and Eddie Murphy got to do a little bit of work together. They mm-hmm. were in the room together recording that. And that's, this is some early... Early days of, uh, of audio or, or, or voice acting, where they have the actors in the room. Now mm-hmm. Bob's Burgers and some other shows, they'll do separate, yeah. Kind of do that all all together, where they're all in the room together doing yeah. these. Things. Oh, that's right, they do it. They're, they're the, the 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 exception these days. Yeah. yeah, like The Simpsons. As much as I love that show, I think that they kind of missed the mark on this. Where Dan Dan Casanella is in L.A., Hank Azaire is in Seattle, and, and yeah. they're all recording these things and piecing it together. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so the original Shrek, the original, and I think the movie, the way they did it with Mike Myers and Eddie Murphy in in the room together a lot of the times too and Cameron Diaz and all that. Mm-hmm. Chris Farley was one of the, going to be one of the first voice actors to really do something like that. Wow. And as great as Mike Myers is, as great as he is as an actor, writer, creator, director, all that, uh, there is no way that he he that he would have been as good that Chris Farley would have um he would he would have been as good as Farley. Like Farley mm-hmm. was born for that role. Mm-hmm. The what Mike Myers did was great, but it's basically you know one of his characters from the uh, yeah. Austin Powers movies. Yeah, exactly. Um, that, and that's nothing wrong with that. It worked. They made like five movies out of yeah, those. Yeah, right. Everybody loves those movies. Um, but if Chris Farley's in that role, it's different, man. It, it, it's it's you think Shrek is big now? Yeah. You th- <laughs> not even close to how gigantic Shrek would have been. I, just, just hearing in comparison. that. Just hearing that little bit there, I, I'd be fascinated now. Just to, just to see the alternate universe where Chris Farley makes that movie. I'm really uh, spoiled at uh, Second City because we've got archives and we have all oh. these like hours and hours and hours and hours of footage that has never been seen by anybody. And right. sometimes they release some of it. Uh, you can find online a great bit of Chris Farley and Tim Meadows as uh, baseball fans. And it's hilarious. <laughs> it's so good. And it's early. Chris looks so young in it. Tim Meadows looks so young. But you re- already see mm. the buildings of what Chris Farley is going to turn his career into. Mm-hmm. Uh, he wanted so bad to be Belushi. 
and yeah. and, it, and it's just uh, it, it's a, it's such a shame. And I, this day to me, uh, while it ring, it, it hurts and it's tough. Even all these years later, I try to uh, think of the work that he did and how popular he still is. I got at least seventy to eighty different students in eleven years that I've been doing teaching mm-hmm. that have come in and want to be the next Chris Farley. Like, That's amazing. I, I can't even like. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, it's too low of a number. I should have went even higher because there's so many of these kids that are influenced by Chris Farley and his work. He's been and he's been gone for so long. That's amazing. And we wrap up uh, with people no longer with us with one of the greats, Susan B. Anthony, born in the oh. state 1820, passed away in 1906. Women's rights pioneer. Women's yes, she was. Pioneer. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there is so much we could say about Susan B. Anthony. Mm-hmm. She we talk about her for days. Mm-hmm. Uh, incredible human being. If you don't know much about Susan B. Anthony, I encourage you to read up about her. Find out more. Mm-hmm. Uh, one more time, wishing a happy anniversary, uh, 49th anniversary to Chuck and Kathy Sedevi. Happy anniversary. Happy 66th anniversary ah. to Wilbur and Dolores Ott. Happy anniversary. Anniversary for you. Enjoy you too. Mm-hmm. And a very happy birthday to our qualifier, our good friend Diane Blanchard. Diane, happy birthday. Congratulations. And once again, thank you so much. Thank you, Diane. You're awesome. Encourage everybody to celebrate with our good friends over at El Cafe. They're at 221 Market Avenue in beautiful Port Edwards. Get on over there. Wish them a great day from all of us at WFHR. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Morning show here at WFHR. Locally grown radio. Seth and James hanging out with you. Thanks so much for joining us on this Friday Eve. Mm-hmm. We hope you're having a good one out there and staying safe. Got a little bit of that uh, winter mother nature you know, overnight. <laughs> yes. Uh, I actually didn't think we were going to get much of anything. Anything was going to stick, uh, at least until about midnight. It didn't seem like it was. Mm-hmm. And then I blink, and, and we got wait, this. wait, snow! Oh yeah. my gosh! It actually looks like winter outside a yeah. little bit. Of course, not enough snow for us to like really do much. No, with and it, uh, I don't think it's going to last either. No, no, it doesn't. It's going to go like away it. pretty quick. Enjoy it while you can. Throw some snowballs. If there you, you can. go. There you go. <laughs> uh, now that Valentine's Day is over, and all the my Valentine social media posts are uh, slipping off our feed, let's be honest. Have you ever had two Valentines at once? A new poll asked people if they've ever seen uh, been in love with more than one person at the same time. Ooh. I uh, I personally think that's impossible. I, I don't. I, I think that uh, human beings have plenty of love to give, mm-hmm. and I think that there are plenty of gray areas in life. But I think that while you may think you're in love with two people, one of them is infatuation, and one of them is actual, you know, genuine. What we define as love, or what mm-hmm. love is defined into your heart. Right. Um, I, I think that there's a, a real cross there. I don't yeah. think anybody can necessarily just uh, date like twenty people and, and be fine with it. Right. Like 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 long term. Like we're we're not talking about just you know going out on a date or two. Yeah, yeah, we're talking like long term relationships. I'm, I'm talking yeah. like secret family stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm talking like, yeah, yeah. I got this family. Why'd you get mail for the Hendersons? No yeah. reason. No reason. <laughs> Um, 27% of people said that they have, 64% haven't, and 9% conveniently don't recall. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, sure right. you don't recall. Oh, I don't remember. The majority, overwhelming majority of people answer that they did this when they were quite young. Mm. Uh, another poll asked how many people you've been in love with in your lifetime. Ooh. That's an interesting one. That's, ooh, yeah. And I'm, uh, and, and there they're, looks like they're talking relationships here, not just to, you know, uh, loving a pet yeah. or, a fr- or, you know, friend yeah. or something like that. Uh, the most common answer was two. 24% of people said that. 19% said three. And 17% said one. Oh, wow. I like that. That's uh, interesting, yeah. I, I Not very high numbers either. No, those are pretty low. And I guess that makes sense, you know, because yeah. it's... <sighs> To find that you know the person that that person you're compatible with that's willing to, you know, uh, uh, love you back kind of thing. Yeah, that that's rare. You know, that's not you don't find that very often. Tell um, me about. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and then and then I mean and, and then after that you have to start working on the relationship. So you know, yeah, you both love each other, but now the work begins. You know, yeah. you got to make sure if you want to keep this relationship, you got to work at it. So ten percent of people admitted that they've been in love more than five times, which was the max, and four percent claimed that they've never been in love. <laughs> uh, oh, well, I can see that. Yeah, that's that's true. Here are two other bits of post Valentine news. Not surprisingly, major retailers are saying that they that the majority of Valentine Day sales happened on Valentine's Day and or the day before. The headline is about people waiting until the last minute, but the fresher item for the but for fresher items like flowers and sweets, you probably don't want to get them too early. Right. So that is part of that. Mm-hmm. Um huh, interesting. Yeah. 
I, I also think that uh, if you um, if you are smart and you have a sweet tooth, today is the day to be out there. Get that candy. Sales. Sales, baby. The day after 80, sales. 80% off uh, candy hearts. <laughs> yep. uh, you know, it's all going on today. Today is a good day to pick that up. It is. It's, it's every after holiday is the best day for candy shopping. Uh, November 1st and February 15th. Two yep. great days if you are a candy lover and you've got a 100%. sweet tooth like I do. Yep. Uh, <laughs> another survey asked people how they feel about their Valentine's Day spending after the fact. Most people, about 64% said that they didn't get carried away and stayed on budget. 13% said that they overspent, but it was worth it. 11% said that they wished that they had spent or done more. And 6% said it was more trouble than it was worth. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I mean, okay. Kind of an understanding list. Like, yeah. Like, kind of, kind of, yeah, I kind of get all of that. that yeah. got, all of it kind of made sense to me. Hmm. Um, let's go ahead and take a quick time out. If my, right. I don't know. I'm trying my to computer. see if my computer is working here. Come on. There we all go. Right. There we go. All right. Let's take a quick time out. We'll come back and we're going to talk about these kids who got a scholarship uh, to a sport. I, I, I'll give you a billion guesses, and I don't think you're going to get it, everybody. I'm worried. Yeah. I'm yeah. worried. It's I'm, I'm worried what it is. <laughs> Morning show at WFHR. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Morning show at WFHR. Well, it's a marvelous night for a moon dance with the stars up above in your eyes. Seth and James here with you. Little smooth voiced Van Morrison to play us yeah. in. Moon oh. dance. Oh, great song. <laughs> I'm not, I, I'm not sure. I think it might be my favorite Van Morrison song. Might yeah, be. Might be. It's a hard one to pick. Yeah. I'm not sure. Domino is probably one up there oh, for me. I really like one. that one. Gloria. Yeah. Uh, he does a great job yep. with Gloria. It's a couple of great versions of that song. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. This almost makes you want to go back to school. Two kids from Colorado were just awarded the first ever athletic scholarships to play Division One Cornhole. Oh, jeez. Yep. It's happened to everybody. We've gotten there. <sighs> <clears throat> Their names are, of course, Jackson with an X, uh, Remnick, and Gavin Hammond. Uh, they went to, and, and I'm only teasing. It's just they're young kids. Yeah. yeah they, was, there's a stretch there where every every young boy was, was named Jackson. Jackson with an X. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, they went to Thunder Ridge High, sc- High School near Denver, which has a strong cornhole program. <laughs> They're obviously cornhole prodigies. They won the first ever high school championship together in 2021, and then another one a year later. <laughs> On National Signing Day last week, because yes, that's a thing for, uh, for even for cornhole, cornhole even folks. For cornhole, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they signed letters of intent to play D1 cornhole for <laughs> Winthrop University in South Carolina. <laughs> Uh, the school hasn't said much uh, how much the scholarships is for, but it's not not a full ride. Their new coach at Winthorpe thinks full ride scholarships for cornhole could happen eventually, though. Yeah, it depends. Now, uh, now National Signing Day for like uh, college football players, it's very popular now. For those that don't know about this stuff, and God bless you if you don't you spend your bandwidth on, on signing day yeah. like I do you, and some good. others do. Uh, they'll have a bunch of hats out: UCLA, Wisconsin, you know, Texas, that kind of thing, and then they pick the hat of the t- school they're going to go to. Mm-hmm. With cornhole, with this, they actually have to throw the hat into a hole. They have to like. Th- <laughs> and if they miss. They don't get to go to that yeah, school. Yeah, it, they don't get the They have to make the shot. It's really intense. It's really, <laughs> no, it's <laughs> okay, I get, yes, I have seen competitive cornhole yeah. on ESPN. Same, same. So this is not a stretch. This is not as, a, I mean, for some people out there who don't watch, I'm they're, they're probably like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yeah. And you're right. Yes, <laughs> but yes, at yes. the same time, it's not a surprise because this is what's happening, man. Yeah, this yeah. is what is happening. This is the direction. There. It is all. It is all. I. I uh, how long are we away? Or how far are we away from cornhole, the Olympic sport? <sighs> I hope happen. we're a ways away. I'll tell we're, you, we're, we're barely holding on to baseball in the Olympics. Yeah, we yeah. Uh, it better not pass baseball. Uh, we're already losing out on basketball. We, yeah. we need to start air- adding more <laughs> sports that Americans can be great at. USA, USA. Oh, that's just sad. But anyway, uh, it is. It is a little sad. <laughs> uh, I, I, it, I know it, a little bit of seriousness on this. I think this is awesome. You, you had me at scholarships for kids. Like I don't care what it's for. Yeah. Get more kids in college. Yeah. We understand. I okay. I hope that most people understand hope. out there. Hope. Yeah. How expensive it is to go to school nowadays, and how every single kid uh, outside of you know some coming from a little bit better off life or something financially um, has to debate. Do I go to school or do I in, in be in debt or do I try to find a job mm-hmm. and, and just start making a living right now? Right. Like that's not the American dream. 
Like that's not that's not what we were taught, and that's not what we're told is right. the American dream. Um, if you want things like this, like to believe in the American dream, to, to the the white picket fence, the two point five kids, all that stuff, give kids the ability to actually be able to reach that. Right, right now, it doesn't take. You don't have to be Warren Buffett to understand how hard it is to be able to make a living on minimum wage, mm-hmm. let alone to try to have a, a, a even a, be, live on your own, let alone a car, a, a insurance. Trying, yeah. trying to have a uh, any any type of social life to be able to date to end up getting married mm-hmm. and have that two point five kids in that way pick a fence like this whole thing has got jumbled up and messed up and the only people that don't get it are people that have never had to deal with it right right it, that's you know what you're saying is isn't that self improvement isn't that kind of what this country that's for me, for many years it's like yeah. Go to college. Improve yourself. Yeah. Make your prospects better. Help the country. Help your community at the same time mm-hmm. while you're doing all these things. And now it's just, I don't know. Yeah. It's very yeah. confusing now. I don't know. There's no, I mean, if my, I'm, I'm fortunate my kids are older than this, but if my kids are 17, 18, and they're asking me, well, what do you think I should do? Go to school, get a job. Well, you know, I, they got this great job offer, or mm-hmm. should they go to school and better their minds and their fu- and have a better future? Right. It's a tough one to answer. It's very tough these days. That's why I tell my kids, stand up comedy. No, stand- joke. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Podcasting. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait, that's a little close to home there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a time out. We'll be back with more on the morning show at WFHR. Welcome back, everybody. Morning show here at WFHR. Seth and James hanging out with you. Happy Thursday. I'm happier to hear the spinners. Yeah, me too. Second or third favorite love song of all time. Ooh. This is number two or number three nice. for me. It's a classic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, You're All I Need to Get By. Marvin Gaye, Tammy Terrell, favorite love classic. song of all time. Yeah. Easily. That's a classic. Easily. Like, no, without a question. Yeah. You know, I, I know I know your answer to this. The spinners are your favorite 70s uh, R&B group. Um, they're, they're right up there, but uh, it's between them and the OJs. I can never decide Ooh, which one I like that's better. That's a good one. That's so, yeah. a good one. Uh, All lot, good stuff, though. I know a lot of people, Temptations, Four Tops. It's yeah, usually yeah. those two. The those Motown are, ones, yeah. So good. So yep. good. None against them. None no. against them. Just big spinners, guys. You know, <laughs> yeah, you that's I, true. We are. And stuff. A, state law, <clears throat> a state lawmaker in New Hampshire is prom- promoting a bill that would give the state an official pronunciation for the the name of its capital city, Concord. Or is it Concord? Or is it Concord? Concord. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> State Rep. Eric Gallagher, <laughs> D-Cord, uh, appeared before the House Executive Department and Administrative Committee on Tuesday to discuss his proposal that an official international phonetic alphabet pronunciation for Concord be installed insta- instated alongside the official state <sighs> animal, state sport, and other state symbols. <laughs> So obviously it's Concord, because that's the phonetic way of saying it would be mm. Concord. Mm. Yes. Gallagher, whose preferred pronunciation resembles the word Concord, ran into some op- opposition from Representative uh, Diane Schmidt, uh, 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 who asked Gallagher if he had run his proposal past old Yankee folks whose pronunciation <laughs> of the city name is closer to Con uh, Conkid. 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 Whoa. I've never heard um, that before. I'll tell you, I'm fearful that some of them may be offended if we <laughs> mandate a specific pronunciation that doesn't <laughs> jibe with the heritage. Gallagher oh. responded with the official pronunciation would only be a symbol, not a mandate. There you go. Even though the state fruit is the pumpkin, you can still grow other fruits besides pumpkins, <laughs> which I'm sure our <laughs> apple growers appreciate. <laughs> Gallagher admitted his bill addresses a minor issue, but argued it was no less trivial than having an official state fruit. Yeah, he's got a point. Um, I would like to give uh, do something that we don't get a chance to do a lot, but we should do more often when we feel it and when we see it. <laughs> I want to give a politician credit. Whoa. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Gallagher admitted it's a minor issue. He did. In this era, in this year, where they're turning a mountain into a molehill with like, everything. Every second of every day. And I pick it on one side here. Both sides nope, do it. No, no, uh, yep. it, it, it the, the, the smallest yep. thing, and they turn it into the most gigantic thing. Yep. I actually give them credit, and this is the, how low the bar is, yeah. for saying minor issue. <laughs> Even though he still came back with the trouble. Right, line. right. Well, and, and, and yeah, okay, there's nothing wrong with doing this, okay? Mm-hmm. Every state has their, you know, official whatever, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. So it, there's nothing wrong with doing this amongst, I mean, I'm hoping that the 
New Hampshire state legislature is doing important things as well, you know, yeah. things that are important to the their constituents and all that. But at the same time, there's nothing wrong with doing these little things as, you know, I think these are nice things that can, I mean, there was a little, I think it was very tongue in cheek, you know, them, yeah. the back and forth on yeah, this. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But it can also bring us together. You know, we can yeah. all agree that the, the state muffin of Minnesota is the blueberry muffin or whatever, right, you know, that right. kind of thing. I, I agree. Uh, and I, I, I also think that we need a little lightness in politics oh, 100%, from time to time. Yeah. There's serious things going on. And obviously, yeah. I, I don't think anybody that's lost on <laughs> We all anybody. understand that, yeah. Uh, could use a little lightness nowadays. 100%. You know, we could man. use a little. I, I actually think that we're, we've are we been doing this whole thing completely wrong. <laughs> uh, we should have nothing but comedians running for office. <laughs> Every every position across the world. Uh, I'm not talking about just in America. I mean, like in Russia and China. Everywhere, everywhere should have just comedians running everything. <laughs> we we've messed this up since the days of king and queens. It should have been the court jester that was running everything. They're the ones that knew what was really going on. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm kidding, but tell me I'm wrong. He's half kidding. <laughs> I, I'm only half kidding. <laughs> kidding on this one. Four two four twenty six. Prove him wrong. Prove him uh, wrong. <clears throat> do you think our country might be better with uh, if we had had Jackie Gleason as a president <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jack Benny Jack Benny as a red skeleton yeah, any, any one of those guys and you know the, uh, the congressman from New York red skeleton would you like to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got a great one. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, he's got to go. He's got to go. We'll get to the bill on, on uh, seatbelts in a little bit. He's we we want to hear this joke. one. We want to hear, hear this one. joke. Okay, everybody, wait. <laughs> I mean, you know, it might not, I wonder how much would get done. <laughs> that that part would be a one, little bit One of a, thing I would know, I, I, I know for sure, C-SPAN would be the most popular channel <laughs> on cable. A hundred. It's gonna. That's it. I. I. No doubts in my mind. I think on accident. I think we might have stumbled into something here, man. I think. I think actually we might have stumbled right into something. Uh, the oh only, no. The, the catch of it is, no comedian with their salt is actually going to run. No, 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 they're not. No, nobody who actually like really like kind of gets some of this stuff is actually running because they're usually pretty good, and that means they have a good gig and they're yeah, paid well, and yeah. they're not going to want to yeah go into the, you have to go into Congress. I mean, mm. stay around. No, it's the same audience every day. It also <laughs> right. You know, it, well, they, um, it, it does speak too to how badly we need uh, fresh voices and we need good people in politics. It's true. It's very true. A health and wellness company in Australia set a Guinness World Record when a 509 people took ice. Ice baths at the same time on a beach. That sounds cold. Yeah, one yeah. Li- one life uh, one life live it organized the attempt at the record uh, for the most people taking an ice bath simultaneously at uh, Leighton Beach in uh, Western Australia. One life live it. Yeah, that, that's a interesting. That's interesting name for your group. But hey, I'm not judging. Especially when uh, <laughs> you're, you're, you're one life live it. Okay, let's go attempt <laughs> attempt the fates with hypothermia. Let's yeah, look. exactly. <laughs> yeah, just a, and now you're dead. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope you live that life. The company set up large inflatable pools on the beach, and the participants entered together with about 12 bathers in each pool. Participants, uh, participants were required to remain submerged up to their necks for at least three minutes to qualify for the record. A total of 537 people made the attempt, but only 509 managed to, dis- to go to the, dis- the distance. Well, that's, blah, blah, blah. that's fine. Yeah. Your, your tongue, tongue froze tongue there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just talking about just it. Just talking about it got cold. Yeah. <laughs> the total was enough to surpass the goal of 483 three people and win the record. Oh, but- <laughs> The Guinness World Record uh, record adjudicators uh, were, was present to give an official certificate to the organizers. Man, if this this is the kind of thing is winning, you know, Guinness World Record, there's got to be something we can do. There's uh, yes. got to be something we can do. Bef- with, dream something up. I don't know what it is. Before but- it is all said and done, we are going to attempt. <laughs> I'm not going to say we're going to break it, but we're going to attempt a record. We a are world to, record, yes. Uh, our morning show is going to do that, everybody. It, 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 any day now, we're going to come up with it. If you got an idea, let us know. 424-2600. Yes. Uh, otherwise, you can email our staff, uh, james.mailov at civicmedia.us, seth.havhagger at civicmedia.us. Yep. You can, of course, direct message us on our Facebook pages as well. I'm being very serious about this. You got give uh, us some ideas, but yeah. remember, but, but please be kind. I mean, don't don't have to you know like wrestle bears or something. I'm, I'm yeah. I don't think we're going to be interested in that. Remember, but. it's probably me that's going to be doing this <laughs> because I'm the one that's uh, kind of like a, you've been talking about this quite a bit. Yeah, and I think yeah, well, it's it's a fair. It's not really fair to put Melissa and Seth or anybody else <laughs> into this one when I've kind of walked us into this, uh, walked us down the plank, if you will. He's he's he's, he's true. That's very true, my friend. Yes. Uh, I do want to let everybody know that we do have our pet of the week come or not our pet of the week this week. We 
we're doing things a little differently with our Southwood County Humane Society. Mm -hmm. We'll have Tim joining us. We're going to talk a little shop with him, talk a little bit how things are going over there and things that they could use and need over at the Humane Society. Sounds good. Looking forward to that. I did want to touch on this one. Uh, Pam sent this over, and if you hadn't seen this story, everybody, I wanted to touch on this. It's a good story of the day, and it's a local one. All right. Um, uh, Chief musicians uh, Jennifer Stokes from Webner Groves, Missouri, and Renee DeBauer from Wisconsin Rapids (gasps) will be performing for uh, students at uh, Sentinel High School in Burleson, Texas, as part of the United States Navy Band's 2024 national tour. Well, how about that? Wow. I didn't know we had a native that was in the, the Navy band. That's, That's really cool. cool. <clears throat> the Navy band will travel uh, 25,000 ground miles over 18 days to give uh, to seven states, giving 12 public concerts as well as five concerts for students in schools. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, that is so, so cool. Uh, uh, congratulations, Renee. Congratulations. Yeah, that's that's really neat. I mean, if you ever had a chance to check out the Navy Band, like on YouTube or something, they're an amazing group. The mu- their musicianship is amazing. You ain't kidding. Like, like they got they, fabulous. And, and and we're not under. I mean, if anything, we're underselling how yep. good they are. There are some really talented human beings in that. Mm-hmm. I, I remember David Robinson playing piano for the Navy Band back when he was in school, uh, like all back in the day. Is there and anything stuff. he couldn't do? Yeah, right. He was one of those guys. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Renee, and to yep. her family and yep. her friends and everything. Very cool. Uh, take a lot of pride in that. Yeah, Seth and I. We'll be back with our friends from the South County Main Society, some entertainment news, and plenty more for you right here at... You're listening to Locally Grown Radio, WFHR, home for Up North News Radio.